this one. Look at all this schmutz in here. It's original and it probably just rotted out. Look at that sludge. No wonder them brakes weren't working. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> getting late but uh parking here for the morning so i'm gonna do some hours before i go to work um but the pedal here is i mean you're better off farting in the wind i'm trying to stop this thing so uh the brakes aren't working uh they actually died on me i was going up my little hill here and uh actually i was going down the little hill stepped on the brakes to slow down they went right to the floor and uh had to put the bucket into the ground to stop it so um can't work that way starter fluid early morning So I got the tire off and, you know, tractors are totally different than, um, you know, cars. Well, I shouldn't say totally different, but the brake mechanism, where they're located, is totally different. Um, and it's inside this whole axle here. So I'm just looking, like I got to pull this entire axle. Uh, so you see I got the back of the loader frame bolted on, so that's got to come undone. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to separate the fender out. Came out nice. Alright, do the same thing on the other side. So this gives us a lot more access. Um, so anyway, the way the brake mechanism works is uh, there is a lever down here. And what that does is it applies pressure on the band of the drum, which uh, is right here, actually. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do next is uh, I'm going to have to hook up the engine hoist. Uh, hook it onto here. Then I'm going to have to zip out all those bolts and pull that out of that rear. Uh oh. I just took this nut out. Look at this oil coming out of here. This bottom casing. I don't think that's supposed to happen. I think this <clears throat> these are supposed to be sealed units. They're not supposed to leak any fluid anywhere. 
So, this sucks. But that usually means that the seal in here failed. Jack her up. Ooh, got some tension on this thing. There we go. She wiggled, so I'm gonna loosen it back down now. There we go. See how she spun a little bit? I'm just gonna lift it up again now, just a bit. Nice. We should be able to. that out. Look at all this schmutz in here. It's original and it probably just rotted out. Um, and all this like, fucking hydraulic oil leaking everywhere is not helping the old alley. Alright, so I pulled both axles off of the tractor and I really wanted to show you guys this. So I cleaned this out a little bit. Now this was leaking oil, but as you can see, this is what it roughly should look like. You have this brake band here, which is, they call this a band. All right, so similar to like your shoe, this is your band here. And this, as I step on the brake, as you watch, it compresses onto the drum. All right, and that seems to be working fairly well. So I think, now when I did pull this, I had a ton of oil and stuff in here. So I do think oil was slipping out at one point. Uh, or oil was leaking out. But needless to say, irregardless, I, this whole cap has to come off um, because I got to either A, the bearing seal here is leaking or the O-ring or silicone that was put back here failed and a bunch of oil was leaking through here. So this is supposed to be dry, all right? It's not supposed to be wet. In here where the, t the teeth are, yeah, that's supposed to be wet, but besides that, nah. So, if you were to take a look at the other side, this side is like, holy shit, you know, this shoe's original, uh, just nothing but crap everywhere, it like disintegrated, and I think uh, the oil helped like disintegrate it. Um, this seat bearing seal here, again, this is black, uh, so I think this will, I think this might be even original, um, but needless to say, I gotta go look uh, at uh, Agco's website and get more uh, brakes. Plate. This plate here comes with these bolts, and these bolts have this plate um, that is bent over just like that. You see how it's bent over? And they do that to prevent the bolt from spinning um, or loosening up. It's like an extra safety measure. I have no clue how um, it would really do it, but it must have done it somehow because. Uh, they did that, so I guess we'll have to bend, uh, when we put this in, we'll have to bend them to a uh, lock. And just get over where there's a little opening. Bender. There you go. Just make a little bend, and then you take the appropriate socket. These are 17 mils, and then I take my hammer, and I tap each one. That way you don't strip it on the way out, because if you strip these, you'll have a hell of a time doing them. See? Look how easy that was. Alright, I'm going to zip these off. And then let's see what it looks like. Jesus. What the hell is going on here? Oh. 
Jesus. What the fuck? Yeah, so check this out. So these steel things act as shim somehow. And then look, there's O-rings. That sit in here and these O-rings dried out. And then you can see the oil's supposed to be in that valley. But, uh, and it is in the valley. But, uh, yeah, this O-ring failed. And so she was leaking. Yeah, so your raceway is at the in this end cap here. And so, then, so this this is actually a pretty uh, crucial part here. No wonder why it's cast. And because uh, <clears throat> otherwise the thing would flop. All right, I'm gonna suck the rest of that shit out of there too. Really, it should be clear. All right, so we need a seal and an O-ring. See what we find online. All right, so quick history lesson. Um, Agco bought Alice and Massey, so there are newer Agco tractors. It's like a newer, <clears throat> newer type of brand, but they bought a lot of the Alice. They bought they bought out Alice and they bought out uh, Massey. So anyway, if you go to Agco's website, um, they give you all of their parts diagrams for everything. So if you go to parts.agcocorp.com, um, all you do is just type in. You search, I do search parts book, and then I type in 5040, boom, pops right up, really easy. And then you can search at what you're looking for, and then look at these exploded views. So what we're looking for is, um, well, what we're looking for is to do the brakes on this thing. So since we got it apart, one thing we do want to buy is this number 13 here, which is a new band. Um, that's like your real brake band. So we're going to want to get that. And the other thing we're going to want to get is this one here, number nine. Uh, this is a bushing on all most of the tractors. This is a brass uh, bushing, and it just wears over time. It's why it's brass, so I would recommend changing this out too. This is usually a cast part, um, and that's your lever. So if the if I called Agco, they probably couldn't get these anyway. I'd probably have to get them from a scrapyard. But consumables like these bushings, these brake pads, they will have. So, yeah, so we're going to get a set of those on either side. And then the other thing we got to do is, if you guys remember, I need to, all right, this is another part of the trans, or I'm sorry, the axle. Anyway, I lost my mouse. Here we go. So uh, this, is, this is that plate that we took off, and here is those uh, bars that go on that plate. So here is number 31, and if you even if you click the number, look one or two, it's an O-ring. So I'm need to get two of those, um, and then I also need to get a seal. So I just don't see a part number for the seal. So I might have to call those guys because I see 25 is there, and that goes in here. I get, I, like there's a part number for this end cap, but. If you go to 9, 9 says support, without o-ring groove, support with o-ring groove, yeah, I don't know, so anyway, I gotta find that, but yeah, go to agcode.com, you can find just about all your parts. Okay, so this pool here is a 13, I just broke that real quick. But we're going to have to pull this linkage out. Let me take out this cotter pin, too. All right, so I just punched that pin out. My screwdriver, I'm going to let go. Just make sure you get that pin back. Woo! All right. So that's completely released. Oh, probably got to move that spring. All right, so I got forgot to hit record, but anyway, I just took my pry bar here and popped the spring right off. Now this can move freely, and hopefully we can wiggle this puppy out. This thing there. This is pretty loose, like you can see. 
there is inspection plate under here have to look at and this looks yeah there's more oil coming out and this looks like there's a gasket on this too i jesus look at that sludge no wonder them brakes weren't working so now that the inspection plate's gone let me clean it up a little bit jesus all this crap Oh, I love how they made holes for castings back in the day. While we're down here, uh, before I do this, these bolts here, these are your uh, band tensioners. So your band is your brakes, and this is your tensioner. So we're going to back this thing all the way off um, when we put the new ones in. And once the, once the uh, wheels are on, then I'll spin the wheels freely and then tighten this up until uh, it got a little resistance, just like uh, trailer brakes. All right, so now we're gonna pull this cotter pin and uh, then unbolt this thing. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just sucking out the rest of the transmission oil. You can call it hydraulic oil, but it's the transmission oil. So I'm sucking out the rest of that because it was milky and we wanna start with nice clean fluid. So all in all, um, the parts finally came, so I can show those to you guys next. Okay, so it was actually a safety wire, so I'm going to take that safety wire out. Oh, she's on it good. There we go. Now that bolt's out. Put that to the side. And now that pin's out. And that's the pin. And you can see where it was countersunk in there. So it only goes in one way. All right, and then here's, this is the brass bushing which we're gonna order. Um, it's probably fine, but we're gonna order one anyway, just in case. There we go. You can see that I'm wiggling this thing just in a way so I can pull this pin out there we go you gotta finagle that little t-bone with your fingers and then wiggle out this pin look at that nice and then that gives me a bunch of flexibility with the band I think they're just literally little flare outs and here they are and the reason being is because they can't go anywhere once they're in here all right so i'm calling it my little t-bone the t-bone fell and we're just gonna use your finger and get it out there we go there she be now this is um this is steel this isn't brass so um yeah but this is our little t-bone and that was the safety wire I cut. But that, pretty much this holds the top end of the band. This one holds the bottom end. There we go. Bender out there. And I should be able to just start wiggling it. Yeah. I'm just gonna wiggle it out. I bet you these are original. It's still got the original color on it. And this is like your brake shoe. Look at this thing. That's your brake shoe in a tractor. It's not supposed to be so greasy. That's uh, so. The first thing you want to do is your block here that the pins are gonna go in. For the brake bands clamps it together, you're going to plop that thing in there. You do want to make sure it's oriented right, and the orientation is supposed to be for the safety wire to the right. Okay. 
Now doing these bands can be a little wacky, but you want to do, you want to fish it in one side first, just like that, and then uh, going to need a pry bar to get the other side in. Okay. Well, I guess it's technically the bottom end. Until she pops in just like that. And let's do the same thing. There we go. Perfect. Now she's in there. So, and then that brake band's gonna go around that drum. So now that this thing's in here, um, now that that's in there, I'm actually going to hook up these pins. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hook up the pins and then we'll throw the cap in. All right, so if you can see that, what I'm doing is, I'm going from the bottom. Yeah, let's rotate this guy out. Yeah, gonna have to uh, just do these one at a time. All right. Cool. Is it rotating nicely? It's gonna rotate. Yeah, there we go. So you can see. As I rotate this, man, two hands. As I rotate this with my finger, it's tough, but when I rotate it, you can see the band clamps up on the axle. Okay, cool. So now, um, you know, before we put the seal in, let's put the bushing in too get it all together and let's get some grease out on the old finger here let's go some red and tacky and what I'm gonna do is I am putting some grease on the end of this bad boy here because it's gonna this is gonna go into that brass um, or I should say that bronze bushing all this other stuff's gonna squirt right out. And remember, this is your bottom one because that pin's gonna recede. This pin is gonna go right in here and lock in here. All right, so we got some grease. We'll lube it up, and this is what's really your your pedal um, is really pushing on this. All right, that should be good. And we're gonna install this thing. the bottom okay I can see it take this out all right I don't know if you can see man that thing's still gonna come over quite a bit That worked. Things in there. And she's locked. Good man, it's like we know what we're doing. Okay. So now that that is. See how I push that? Now when I push, the pedal's gonna go back this way and then press on the, um, the drum. So. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get this old seal out of here. You wanna be careful you're not fucking up the sides of this thing.
There we go. There we go. Gotta make sure you have the right seal too, because once you fuck this thing up, you're done. do that you should be able to get under it and pry her out all right so now that I folded it over a couple times I'm gonna punch this thing out so I just got a big socket that I got laying around it sits in there nice and I can punch this thing out Screwdriver went in. Nice. And she popped out just like that. So do the fold over and then the punch uh, method. Works great. Alright, so let's put this aside. Now we're going to prep and clean this one up for when we do the ring install. Now, believe it or not, the o ring on this one is pretty tight. Looks good. But uh, she was leaking somewhere, so actually, you see how loose this thing is? Just pull it out. Okay, garbage. So just clean up all the crap here. Make sure she's got a nice clean surface, getting in that groove. A wire brush inside this groove. So again, there's a lot of shit sitting in here. And it will affect the sealing properties with the O-ring. Alright, cool. Alright, let's put... Uh, Put the new seal in. Oh yeah. That'll fit. Alright, so what I'm gonna do first is ideally you want to use like a piece of plastic, but I'm gonna use a block of wood just to get this thing set in there. Take my brass punch and just tap her. Just gonna be careful you don't fold her over. She's looking all right. Yep, she's looking all right. going all right that looks good that looks good let's put our spacers back on these are spacers these are all just like shitty little steel spacers but they're from the factory um, the factory set these up so you could buy new ones if you want to but you have to measure these to get the right size but instead I would just reuse them they're just spacers so who cares Let's prelude this o ring. Okay. And now we got our o ring on. 
All right, let's go install this. Let's put the seal in. Now the seal, if you're looking at this thing properly, you gotta look, here you go. See, there's a hole here, all right? So the hole there, I didn't look this up, but the hole has to go down. And the reason why it's gotta go down is in the event oil gets in here, and it will get in here, it's gotta drain somewhere, so it'll drain from the bottom, not the top. At least that's my theory. Send this in. I just want to press this in, really. I'm just going to put this puppy in lightly. And I'm taking my time with this because I'm not trying to fuck up that O-ring. Alright, you got to take your sweet time here. And that is seated good. So I'm personally happy with that. I'm going to back these out now. Okay. Okay. Now, if you remember, we had this goofy cover on here. Okay. So now we're going to put this cover on. And it's slides right behind the brake band like that and it's and finally we have our safeties here and now we can fasten this on man it is sticky today I have some fucked up threads right there. And that's my torque spec. Oh, well, reality, I'm sure there is a special torque spec, but there's, you know, no need to go crazy here. All right, so the final thing we gotta do is we're just gonna bend these little ears back. And I'm gonna do my needle nose. So I just grab this corner here, just like so. I'm gonna bend it up, just like that. 
do the same thing on this one. There we go. And we're just going to go around the horn here. All this does is prevents the nut from moving, I guess. This is how it was, so put it back the way it was. Alright, so that's on there. Only thing left to do is uh, put that big ass axle in. So I guess we'll do that. Alright, so I pretty much have this thing where I want it. Um, I just got it holding up with the engine hoist here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna lube the shaft here. I'm gonna lube this shaft because the shaft ultimately has to go into that oil seal there. And I want to lube it because I know me installing this is not going to go, it's not going to be precise, it's not done in a factory. So the grease is going to help me um, slide in and out. And uh, don't worry about grease going in the transmission because uh, an old tractor can't take any grease. Well, so. just lubing up the spindles. Really, the oil seal is going to be on here, but I want this thing to go in pretty smooth. So she went in, but I'm going to have to rotate it.
girl. You big girl. Yeah, these year Alice's came from um, Romania. So the Alice, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s models, um, they came from Romania. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying that's where they came from. Getting it a little tight now. I'm gonna zip around all of them and do. Make sure we do up the linkages right and what the fuck? Get this goofy thing out of here. do the wiring when the time comes okay so oh look at this some of you can see but you see how much thread is here so you see this thing's been uh, completely adjusted before and probably because the brakes were out so anyway I don't think that's bad. I think I got room nice tension on your brake band. 
and if you put too much on, it's going to constantly apply drag to your brakes. Um, so think of it as like very similar like electric brakes on the trailer. You're adjusting the slack on them, so that way when you're when the pedal's pressing on them, it doesn't flex down. You know, it flexes on this adjuster here. And like here, I got pressure, so I'm going until it's snug, and right there it's snug. I'm not going to go anymore. And it just applies extra pressure on the brakes, so that way you're not, when you're pushing down the brake pad, this doesn't just flex and hit the ground. So I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just going to tighten this up and go from there. So again, I just went until it's snug. <clears throat> now what I'm going to have to do is i got to drive the tractor around, set the brakes, get it in, and then once that's done, then I'll probably readjust the slack because it'll wear off any of the bullshit. Uh, she'll seat herself and yeah. But yeah. I'm gonna guess tomorrow now. Alright, you do that just to get the tire on. Now I'm going to jack it up a little more. Alright, just jacked up a little bit. This allows me to move the tire like so. So now I'm going to loosen these up. So now the rim can seat properly to the axle. Alright, just wrapped up that side. I did a tire test. It's got decent drag, probably a little too much, um, but I'm going to drive it around, jack it up, see if it needs to be readjusted. But for right now, I can turn it, but it's got a little bit of drag. Here, I'll show you. So when I, when I grab this, it's moving, but it's got a little drag to it. It's not terrible, but this is probably just a little too much for me. Um, so... You're gonna want you want some tire drag on your tractor. You don't want it to just fly down the hill when your clutch gone. So um, kind of like trailer brakes, but uh, it'll loosen up when I drive it around. All right, I'm gonna do the next side. Um, I got it all cleaned out. You can see that the best I could. But I'm gonna throw the band in this. I'm gonna do everything I already showed you on that side. Just gonna do it here. Um, but I'm not gonna record it because. No sense in making it a two hour long. And like that, the side's done. So, now we gotta test the brake. I think I'm gonna have to get more uh... all right so this pin I left the inner cotter pin out so I can easily do that 
and we're going to let's turn this out it's one turn that's two turn let's do two turns and see how you can still go there like easily let's do one more turn three turns yeah all right Um, however, you're not done. Unfortunately, you're going to have to drive the tractor around, work it. You're going to notice the brakes are going to get loose, and that's okay because the pads are settling in. Um, the linkages are getting back to normal. And then you just got to do that and retighten them up again. But other than that, uh, we got a tractor show to go to. Oh, hell yeah.